This is Tom Dillon, the Lifetime Liberal, and today is Monday, October 24th, 2016. Uh, hello, Jean. I hope you are doing well. Uh, the title of this rant will be The Fight for Mosul, Proxy Wars, and Atrocities. So the fight for Mosul is now going on as we try to get rid of ISIL, as we try to get rid of Daesh, uh, a very strong contingent uh, of a lot of troops from a lot of different places are heading into Mosul or surrounding Mosul right now. Air power being provided by the United States, possibly some air power from uh, the Iraqis. Uh, don't know for sure, but um, this, I'm going to bring in a little bit of, uh, of Syria also in all of this. Uh, but let's look at the Syrian war for a second and go back to Mosul. Is what we have in Syria is we have a double proxy war. Uh, we have a proxy war in Syria of the United States versus um, Russia. We have a proxy war of Saudi Arabia versus Iran. And we could also say possibly another proxy war of Sunni versus Shia, Saudi Arabia being Sunni and Iran being Shia. And let's also remember that of the hundreds of thousands of refugees from Syria. I don't believe Saudi Arabia has taken in any of them. I know Jordan has. I know Turkey has. Um, don't know about Lebanon. But uh, Saudi Arabia, I don't think, has taken in any. And of course, Iran has not taken in any. Uh, and of course, that is on a different country, technically a sovereign country right now. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that in a second. But in the fight, so that's the same type of thing that's going on over in Mosul but it's a little bit different. Right now we have ISIL held up in Mosul, maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000 troops out of a population that was at one time one and a half million. They think it's half that or much less than that right now. Uh, there are uh, I Iraqi troops that are heading up there and in, in there. There are uh, Shia militiamen who have been trained by the Iranian uh, uh, Quds Force that are there. There are Kurds there. Uh, there are uh, <laughs> Sunni, uh, the Sunni uh, the militia also right there. A lot of that's being coordinated by the United States. And what we have here is what's going to happen when they do get into Mosul. Is there going to be a land grab? Are there going to be atrocities? Uh, how long will it take? Uh, will the United States have to get into it much more? Uh, at least from the way it's going right now, it's being very slow. It's being very methodical. Uh, they're weeding some out. They're, they're taking old towns. They're taking towns that have no one in them that are surrounding Mosul. Uh, uh, Daesh is sending diversionary forces to other towns, uh, mostly suicide bombers, etc. And let's get one other thing straight. Not everyone in Daesh is a suicide person. When they go, they first recruited and they brought in, into Daesh or ISIL, wherever it is in the different areas of uh, Syria and the different areas of uh, uh, Iraq, uh, they segregate them. Who wants to be the suicide bomber and who wants to just fight and claim glory and, you know, get the, uh, uh, get the uh, physical um, uh, prizes? Uh, of taking over lands and taking over people, let's just say. So uh, there will be a long fight. There's tremendous amount of suspicion that there will be booby traps all over the place. There'll be IEDs all over the place, that there'll be human shields all over the place, uh, that there are tunnels all over the place with tremendous amount of explosives. Uh, ISIL already detonated or bombed or blew up a, uh, was it a sulfur factory. Uh, the United States uh, uh, um, troops that are near there, that are helping coordinate, put on their gas masks, etc. But what happens when things go in? Remember that uh, the Shia militia might want to use this as a land grab. Uh, the Kurds want to keep what they have, but if they take over any more territory, well, do they want to keep that? Remember, the Kurds and the Sunni uh, uh, Arabs had lived in Mosul for a long time very, very peacefully. Uh, where it would, remember, it was the Shia uh, who were the ones who were basically watching Mosul with American equipment when ISIL came in and tallyhoed out of there pretty quickly. Uh, will they go into Mosul? Uh, will they commit atrocities? Will they go for a land grab? Uh, will there be fighting between the, the, the Kurds and the Shia? Damn, this is getting so confusing. It's getting hard to keep up with. Uh, and, you know, will the Turks actually help out a little bit? 
Uh, the Turks are helping out a little bit in Syria, but remember, the Turks and the Kurds are also enemies because there are areas of uh, Kurdistan, if you want to call it Kurdistan, is where the Kurds reside. And remember, the Kurds are a separate race of people with a separate language. They occupy areas of Turkey, northern Syria, northern Iraq, and northern Iran. They would like nothing more to have an autonomous or their own country. Uh, of course, the, Turkey doesn't want it. Don't know what might happen in Syria. So there's a lot going on here. And remember also that in the fight in Syria, the United States' hands are tied in a lot of ways. Because when Russia got in there, first off, uh, there was never really a line in the sand in the sense that we were ever going to send troops into Syria. Uh, we already knew that Syria had very, very good uh, air defense systems in case of any type of flyover by any American troops from the Russians. We also know that since the Russia has been in, uh, has been in there much more so, especially in terms of upgrading uh, the port and the airstrip that they have there, or they have there in conjunction with Syria. They have uh, uh, upgraded quite a bit their air defense forces for Syria. So there really probably will not be a whole lot of bombing going on by the United States. Tough to say whether or not there could actually be a no-fly zone. Maybe a no-fly zone just in the sense that Russia and Syria agree not to bomb indiscriminately civilian areas in Raqqa. And of course, the, um, in other areas of Syria, where the Syrians are not fighting against uh, the terrorists that want to, I won't say terrorists, but the freedom fighters that want to overthrow Assad, uh, we're also trying to get rid of ISIL. And the Kurds are very good, are, are helping us with that. And actually, the Turks are helping us with that, even though the Turks do not want the Kurds to have the northernmost cities, towns, uh, etc., along the border with Turkey. So there's a lot going on over there. Uh, and remember, uh, Iran is behind a lot of this. Saudi Arabia is behind in a lot of this. Uh, it's a uh, clash of... Uh, of religions, so to speak, or of sex within religions, so to speak. Uh, and it's not going to end uh, without a lot of bloodshed in a lot of areas. Let's hope that ISIL, uh, those who are not the suicide bombers, want to cut and run and either get away or get captured as they're trying to leave Mosul. And let's hope that uh, there can be some type of consensus in Syria that Russia and Syria have to stop the indiscriminate bombing that they're doing in Raqqa. Now, the last thing I want to point out is that this is going to, be, once Mosul is taken, there's still the problem in Syria. Once Mosul is, is taken, there has to be, uh, let's, uh, without another way of terming it, an occupying force that's going to provide for security in Mosul, all the outlying towns, and all the other places that uh, ISIL, Daesh has taken over over the last couple of years. There has to be billions upon billions of dollars done to reinvest into those areas. Uh, will the Kurds be willing to do their fair share? Will they uh, keep their oil money and do that? Will, they, will the um, uh, Iraqi government do that? Will Iran help out? Will Saudi Arabia help out? Uh, will there be that land grab that I talked about with tremendous possibility of atrocities that might go on up there? Uh, and again, the biggest thing about a war, let's just say, is that you win a war by occupying territory. You don't win it by bombing it. You win a war by occupying territory. And this is what Trump doesn't get. This is what the Republicans don't get. Is there going to have, there, is, there is, ha has to be a large occupying force providing for, uh, you know, schools, police, engineering, water, electricity, a court system, you know, some type of way to get uh, uh, safety for goods and services to be, for, be provided in all of these areas. And on the backdrop of all that, there's the proxy wars that are going on between the United States and Russia, Saudi Arabia and Iran, Sunni and Shia, and also Turkey and the Kurds. Uh, it is going to involve a tremendous amount of diplomacy for years and years to come. And let's just hope that as this is taken 
in Mosul as Mosul is retaken. It would be nice if it could be done before the election. But uh, let's just hope that once this is taken, that there can become stability, at least in that part of Iraq, uh, in hopes that there can become stability in Syria, which again will be another issue that will just will go on ad infinitum.